In this study, I want to talk about the marriage of the Lamb. But before I do that, I want to set the stage to the timing of when the marriage will occur. I made a graph that clearly shows at what point the marriage will happen, so let the chips fall where they may. Now, this is a graph of the seven seals that has to be opened to finish the transgressions of the children of Israel, and to see the return of Christ, on the day of the Lord. We want to take note of the fifth and the sixth seals. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Take note of what is being said here, because the answer to their question also is a stepping stone to when the marriage of the Lord will take place. They reminded the Lord saying, Some of us have been asleep here for over three thousand years, how much longer will we have to remain asleep, before you avenge our blood on them on the earth, so that we can be resurrected? Now, by these words, we are not able to know for certain the timing of the opening of this fifth seal, but it will be revealed after this discussion. So Jesus replied to them saying, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Here Jesus is saying, the resurrection will happen one time for all believers, and some believers have not come in as yet, so there will be still some time before the ordained number comes in. Okay so no resurrection has happened, or will happen to raise the souls under the altar, until the completed number has come in. Then everyone will be raised at the same time. Okay, listen to what is being said about the opening of this sixth seal. It will pinpoint where we are on the timeline. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, where have we seen this same description before? Oh yes. It is in Matthew the twenty-fourth chapter, verse twenty-nine saying, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right. So Matthew tells us that the change in the sun, moon, and the stars will happen immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now let's go back to the chart and note that. So. According to what we have just learned, the opening of the sixth seal is after the end of the tribulation period. So the closing of the fifth seal is also the closing of the tribulation period. This means there is still time after the tribulation period where other things must be fulfilled before Jesus comes back. So, we are all on the same page now, understanding that we are no longer in the tribulation period, after the opening of the sixth seal. Now, Let's look at two things that must take place during this time span, after the tribulation, before Jesus comes back. But while we are here, I want to note that the four blood moons, and the darkening of the sun by the solar eclipse, in years past, is not the signs to show his soon coming. For as we have just learned, those signs appear after the tribulation, at the opening of the sixth seal. Now. Let's look at two things that must take place during this time span, after the tribulation, before Jesus comes back. So, after the end of the tribulation period, the Antichrist is still alive. And there is still a one world government. There is still a one world religion. There is still the mark of the beast being taken. There is still buying and selling taking place under his direction and there is still the murdering of Christians. 
Now, after the tribulation, and during this season prior to the Lord's return, there are nations of people that survived the tribulation and come out of it, but still under the rule of the Antichrist. And from among these people, God will seal 144,000 Jews. Their sealing happens outside the tribulation period, and they and the nations that have survived the tribulation, will now be inundated with the vials, and the trumpet judgments. It is this generation, the generation of people who sees the sign in the sun moon, and the stars, that happens after the tribulation, that will also see the second coming of Jesus. During this interval, God will send three angels to fly around in the sky above the earth. The first will have the everlasting gospel, and will preach it from the sky to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and every people on the earth. So even after the tribulation, God will give the people an opportunity to get saved, by hearing the word, since Bibles at that time will most probably be banned. The second will announce, that Babylon, the government, the economy and enterprise of that day, has been defeated, and destroyed. Apparently the judgments of the vial, and the trumpets had done its job, bringing Babylon to her knees, and breaking her grip on the nations. Remember this, because this defeat of Babylon, is the step that has to happen before the marriage of the Lamb will come. The third will announce, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. I actually believe, this angel is telling the world, it is no longer mandatory that you worship the beast, or take the mark of the beast because Babylon has been destroyed. And I believe these angels will be sent out, just ahead of his return. Now, let's connect the dots, to see when the marriage of the Lamb will happen. Scripture says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. First I want to note that this verse began saying, and after these things. If you go back and read chapter 18, it is all about the fall of Babylon, and the casting down of the system that spilled the blood of the prophets, and the saints, from all over the earth. And after that was accomplished, it says, much people are now in heaven. How is it that, all of a sudden John sees much people in heaven, and what was necessary to happen to release them to arrive there? The answer is, the great whore of Babylon was judged, she was terminated, thus avenging the blood of the servants of God, and once that was accomplished, the dead were released to be resurrected to arrive in heaven. Remember the souls under the altar. They asked Jesus, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And Jesus told them to wait a while longer, until all those that should be killed as they were has come in, and they did come in during the time between the end of the tribulation, and the return of his coming. And once Babylon was destroyed, and the last soul was in, there appeared much people in heaven, as the result of God avenging their blood on Babylon. So, what you are witnessing, is the resurrection rapture, which has occurred after the tribulation period, and after the defeat of the whore of Babylon. And at this same moment, when much people appeared in heaven, Scripture says, Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints.
when much people arrived in heaven, this constitutes the resurrection rapture of the saints, and it also constitutes the marriage of the Lamb, for once the body of Christ is united with her head, Jesus, then a marriage has taken place. And how did she make herself ready? It is by her appearing, it is by being now available, and by being changed into his likeness. And it was granted that she be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, which is her change into glory, to reflect the same glory and righteousness as the husband she is now united with. Understand that our union with Jesus here is our wedding day, not our marriage supper. The marriage supper will be performed on earth for those who are called. Scripture says, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. After this, Scripture says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So are you seeing the picture? After the whore of Babylon is destroyed, the resurrection rapture happens to unite the body of Christ with her head, Jesus, which constitutes a marriage, and after that union, he and his wife, the body of Christ, returns back to earth upon white horses. And after everything has settled, he sends out invitations for others to attend the marriage supper, or wedding feast, and many will be called but few will be chosen. So, when you are being told that nothing has to happen before the resurrection rapture can occur, which is also the time of the marriage of the Lamb, that's not true. For as we have clearly seen, the rapture will not occur until first the whore of Babylon is out of the way, she will be burned with fire and her smoke will rise forever, and that occurrence will not happen, until after the tribulation period, has ended. And once we arrive in heaven, the first words we will say are these. Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. The gospel is a wedding proposal where Jesus is asking you to marry him, and when you say I do. This is actually what you are saying. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were dead and buried. And Jesus, I believe you were raised on the third day. Yes Jesus, I will marry you. If your confession was sincerely from the heart, then God will raise you up at that day, and you will be pronounced husband and wife. Alleluia. Thanks for watching. The marriage of the Lamb will take place in heaven, at that day, by the resurrection rapture, which will unite the body of Christ, with their head Jesus, the King of Kings. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Amen.